But look, we're going to start with the latest on the potential sale of Manchester United. Qatar's Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad, Hamad Al Thani has made a bid, while Sir Jim Ratcliffe's offer to buy the Glazer family's 69% share of United. And there's also a financing proposal from US hedge fund Elliott Management. So uh, we are joined by Kave Solokol, as you can see, our chief reporter. Um, where are you right now? Because a lot has happened over the weekend. So just tell us where we're at. Yeah, I mean, there are uh, two serious bids for Manchester United uh, that we know about. One is uh, from Qatar, uh, Sheikh Jassim, and the other one is from Sir Jim Ratcliffe's company, Ineos. Uh, now, as far as the Qataris are concerned, uh, they are confident that they have made the best bid. They believe it's a very compelling bid, uh, not just in terms of price, but also in terms of what their vision is for Manchester United going forward. Not mm -hmm. just the men's team, the women's team, the infrastructure, uh, regenerating the local area around Old Trafford as well. And I think what is really important for Manchester United fans is that the Qatari takeover would be debt free. So Manchester United's debts would be mm. wiped out. And those debts, importantly, were loaded onto the club by the Glazers as part of their leveraged buyout of Manchester United 18 years ago. To this day, those debts, I think, are still £515 million. So the Qataris would wipe that away. And going okay. forward, there would be no debt put onto Manchester United. As far as Sir Jim Ratcliffe is concerned, I think the debt would disappear as well. But obviously, he is not, let's be blunt, he's not as rich uh, as the Qataris are. And he's been advised by uh, banks like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan uh, about his takeover. But we're being told that any uh, money that he borrows to finance his bid for Manchester United, those debts would not be loaded onto the club. OK. Uh, so that's really important for United fans as well. OK, so where are we at in terms of time? Because I guess, uh, you know, I, I sat down with Eric Ten Hag on Friday and I said, well, is it important to you that this sale goes through quickly if it goes through? And he was kind of like, it doesn't really matter, I'm just focusing on the football. But I guess for the fans, they want this to happen probably before the summer, for sure. Well, look, if there are only two serious bidders to buy all of Manchester United, then this can happen pretty quickly. Okay. I think ideally for everybody... Uh, if it was to happen by the end of the season, that would be perfect. Because going into the transfer window, uh, Eric Ten Hag needs to know who's going to be signing the mm. checks. Is it going to be the Glazers? Is it going to be Sheikh Jassim? Is it going to be Sir Jim Ratcliffe? So it would make sense if it's sorted out before the end of the season. But the really important thing here is what do the Glazer family want to do? Do they actually want to sell Manchester United? Or... Do they just want to sell a minority stake in the club and use that money uh, to redevelop Old Trafford? Do they feel that now is not the right time uh, to sell Manchester United? Ultimately, it's up to them. And what we're being told is that the bidders for United are not going to pay crazy money for the club. They won't dance to the Glazers' tune. They have uh, a valuation of what they believe Manchester United is worth mm. and they won't pay more than that. Yeah, uh, when they first talked about this, they sort of, you know, came out when we were, I think we were talking way back at the World Cup. I remember talking to you then. It was always, you know, we're interested in maybe just selling a little bit of it. Do you feel that's changed at all? Or are we kind of blowing this all out of proportion and they actually only want to let go, relinquish a little bit and they'll keep a majority hold? What do you think? Well, I think uh, they basically told the rain group to uh, explore all possibilities. OK. So they have the option of selling all of Manchester United or they have the option of just selling a minority mm. stake. But you have to maybe factor in what United fans think. Because even before the Glazers arrived, there was a lot of opposition to their leveraged buyout of the club. And that opposition has not gone away uh, over 18 years. I think a few days ago, there was a survey in The Athletic that said only 1.8% of United supporters wanted the Glazers to but stay at really the club. 1.8%. So you would think that surely they're looking at it now, they look at the share price and they look at it and say, look, since we effectively put the club up for sale in November, the share price has doubled. The fans don't like us. Money needs to be spent on the team and the stadium. Mm. We're getting these incredible offers probably between four and five billion pounds. 
Uh, a lot of that is going to be tax free as well because they moved the registered offices of United to the Cayman Islands. So you would think that if you're the Glazers, you would be thinking, look, we've made a lot of money. It's been difficult. We've had a lot of bad PR, but this is a perfect opportunity uh, to walk away and sell Manchester United now. But they own 69% of the club and they've mm. got nearly all uh, the Class B shares that have the voting rights. Right. So they don't have to sell no. the club at all if they don't want to. And they've got very thick skin, it seems, because they've been up against it with the fans since time but began. if they stay at the club uh, and they sell a minority stake, Eric Ten Hag needs to be backed in the transfer market. You can't have another uh, window like January when they were only making loan signings. Old Trafford needs to be uh, redeveloped. Uh, you know, Eric Ten Hag is doing a fantastic job at the moment. Uh, the fans 100% behind him. He needs this situation sorted out as well. I know when he spoke to you on Friday, uh, he said that it had nothing to do with him. Mm. But come on, behind the scenes, <laughs> behind the scenes, they're all yeah. talking about it. And they know uh, that the future for them could be uncertain depending on who comes in. Uh, so this But look what it did to Chelsea. So, I mean... Exactly. You look at the situation at Chelsea. Mm. The new owners came in. Virtually everybody in a senior position at Chelsea left uh, within three, four, five months. I don't think that will happen uh, at Manchester United because I think both bidders, uh, although they, uh, it's not information I've had uh, from them personally, but just the noises I'm hearing is that they uh, are all very, very impressed with the job that Eric Ten Hag uh, is doing. And I think he would be an integral part of United's future going forward, no matter who owns the club. All right, look, Kavi, I know you're here all afternoon, so we'll go back to you shortly. Thank you very much.